Breakfast with somebody and today we're focusing on the challenges surrounding the National Football League. John joins us live to explain how former players are reacting to the national anthem controversy as he has breakfast with the Quad City's own Julian Vandervelde. Good morning, John. Good morning there, Angie. Good morning, everybody. Live once again in the village and in Davenport, Central Davenport on Harrison Street. Julian Vandervelde with us right now. National anthem protests. Certainly, you know it already hot button issue mm -hmm. right now in the National Football League. One of the viewer questions that we had, Colin says, do you think that the NFL players should protest police brutality during the National Anthem or should they do it somewhere else? I think that what we've come to is a pretty good uh, compromise in terms of that. You notice teams will come out and they'll like kneel before the anthem and then stand for the anthem. But I don't think we get to this point either in the national discussion uh, on the actual topic or in the anthem protest if it doesn't start somewhere. The idea of the kneeling for the national anthem, the way that Colin Kaepernick uh, did that in, or was in, uh, inspired to do that instead of you know sitting by an actual military veteran, um, I think was a, it's, it's been a progress. It's been steps in the right direction where not only do you get the message out, but you get it out in a way that is more respectful yeah. uh, to the anthem uh, and to the flag. Um, and again, I don't think that we get to the point where we are today in the national discussion if we don't have the guys doing it first, what many would consider the wrong way. Okay, picking backing off that, have the protests hurt the NFL? I don't think any more than the NFL hurts itself with excessive flags, uh, you know, games. I remember when games became almost unwatchable because they rolled out all these new rules and there was every play it seemed like was being penalized. Uh, their viewership dropped, I think it was more from in the first four weeks of uh, two seasons ago to last season than it did from last season to this season, which tells me that there were other factors more important to the fans than like the anthem protest that prevented them from watching football. What, what do you think about, so, so speaking of that, my third question was ratings are starting to decline television wise. Do you think companies don't want to advertise with the NFL though now that the national anthem protest has become a hot button issue? I mean, in a way, do you think that's just compounded the problem? <laughs> no, I think that companies don't want to uh, advertise with the NFL so much because ratings are dropping. Yeah. Because for at least two consecutive years, I don't know what it was three years back, but for two consecutive years, the, the ratings, at least in the first part of the season, uh, took a severe dip. Yeah. Um, and whether that's from styles of gameplay, changes in the way the games are called, the tempo and pace of the game, um, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, we have bigger issues in the anthem protest. Maybe some people stopped watching because of domestic abuse uh, yeah. issues. Maybe some people stopped watching, uh, you know, for, you know, various other uh, reasons. The NFL has much bigger problems. Uh, but despite all that, you also have to take a look at the good that's being done. When I was in Philadelphia, I remember, you know, building parks in inner city schools, yeah. painting murals, doing inner city school reading programs. Um, you know, you get the, the emphasis is always on the guys who are doing the wrong things. But there's so many other people in the NFL, and there are so many of them doing wonderful, wonderful things, building their communities and helping, uh, you know, where either whether they where they're playing or in, at home uh, where they're from. Uh, and I think that we can't take away from those guys uh, just because we disagree with the way that some other guys are presenting themselves. We appreciate you. That's a really good point, by the way. It's something that we don't touch on uh, a whole lot, especially in the media. Um, we're going to have a Facebook Live conversation, Angie, coming up at uh, 655. You've got more on that right now. All right, John, Julian, thank you so much. And don't forget, we do a special Facebook Live, as John just said, to show you the behind the scenes of our Breakfast with Conversations and dig a little deeper into these issues. That takes place at the end of Good Morning Quad Cities on the WQAD Facebook page. One of the biggest events in our area is coming up next week, the Festival of Trees. Next Thursday, we are having breakfast with the administrator, Cheryl DeCap. She's going to join us live at the River Center to show us what's new this year and how your attendance helps arts programs in our area. You can submit any questions you have about Festival of Trees right now at WQAD.com. Just type breakfast in the search box. Still ahead.